Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of Dwarf Fortress, Fortress Mode. I am joined by O4 Zaz and I'm Hosen, so... Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we've already gen the world, so let's go ahead and um, settle. It's not, it's not that we didn't want to show you the gen, it's just that someone is very picky. I'm not picky, I just want a good volcano start. And I gotta set my timer. I never set my timer, that's my calculator. Start playing. Um, where are you? Where? Damn it. Okay, here we go. And start. It's definitely one of those things, definitely. Yep. So, of course, we're going to do fortress mode. And just like all my other... Oh, sh I guess I can show you that. So, if you've never seen this game before, you're probably saying the exact same thing I said when I first saw this. You're probably saying, what the fuck is all this shit? Um, and that's a pretty good question. Even though like a lot of this stuff does look like trees and rocks now because of this graphics pack, um, but that's what they are—they're trees. So green trees and and these are rocks yeah. over here. I remember. I actually remember trying to open the the un one without the texture pack. I like looked at this and I'm thinking, is that what the hell did that triangle even represent? I'm sure it's something. Yeah, yeah. The the original graphics are, pre are pretty pretty bad, but there there you know there's a reason for it. He is going for like quality. Uh, gameplay and stuff. Yeah. So. Quality gameplay, he definitely succeeded in that. Oh, yeah. But, but the problem is, you just c you could not figure out what the hell was happening. It's like, <laughs> that E is running around and all those smiley faces are randomly dying. Something must be happening. <laughs> so, um, this spot right here is actually a volcano. Uh, a volcano, or underneath the ground, there's things called magma pipes, which run from low Z levels up to high Z levels, which I'll explain this stuff earlier if you don't really know what it is, uh, don't worry. Um, a volcano is an instance in which the magma pipe has reached the surface. Um, I'm gonna go a very military style build and arm my guys with like weapons and arms and stuff really quick, so I'm gonna go for a magma or a volcano start. Uh, so this will be our starting spot. Um, there's some of the stats you can see over here, like uh, deep soil. Um, it just I don't know. It's kind of. Uh, I'll explain it more when I get into what deep soil means. Yeah. And uh, the worst thing about the spot is it's gonna have an aquifer. Um, oh, those are pain, aren't they? Yeah, aquifers are like uh, underground water sources and stuff. So like normally where you would just be able to build like really what you want. Um, sometimes the aquifers can get in the way, which really sucks. Yeah, like you mine straight into an underground river, which you did not know was there. Yeah, pretty much. They do have uh, benefits though. Um, you could turn like an aquifer into um, like a well inside, so your guys don't need to go out and you know to use yeah. like soap and stuff to clean themselves, which is it's pretty, pretty nice. Bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. to dwarf outside, isn't it? Because if they're so adapted to the inside, they pretty much vomit and go back in. You know? Yeah. Well, actually, there's a. Uh, I believe there's actually an unhappy thought where your dwarves are inside for too long. Like, they actually like to go outside every once in a while. So sometimes it is beneficial to set up, like, outside meeting areas and things like that, but... Yeah. But let's just say, uh, let's get a straight one thing before you even do anything, is that Ozen is the true expert of this game. I'm someone who just really tags along for the ride whenever I play it. Uh, if by expert you mean I'm capable of being maimed in several ways in this game, then yes, you are correct. <laughs> I'm no, I'm no expert at this game. But you're probably much better than I am. Yeah. So uh, I just want to explain one more thing, and I'll go ahead and uh, jump into this too. Uh, I just want to explain like what these three windows are. So the world window is obviously everything. Um, that's gen in the world, it's every little place. That blinking yellow X here is where I'm at. The region is what's encompassed in that blinking X. Um, and the local is what is in the blinking X on the region. So it's just more magnified, basically. This box right here is going to represent um, what's in my area. It's not actually the whole local region. It's just what you have highlighted is what you're claiming as your area, and I will I will never go outside of this area. That's just how fortress mode is. So. Yeah, I remember. Look, I didn't when I first started. It, I was like looked at the local view. I assumed that entire area was it. So I put myself like in the corner of it, assuming I'm going to get the entire thing. Nah, nah. Yeah. 
So here you can see like elevation and stuff too. So it's a volcano. You can't really expect it to be flat. It's gonna be rocky as shit. Um, but we'll be okay. We're gonna make. We're mainly gonna be inside anyways. And eh, doesn't Actually, matter. Your character's probably gonna be okay because you're the one who's gonna have the huge attachment to guards, aren't you? Yeah, I'm gonna have like military everywhere. Um, so we'll go ahead and prepare for the journey carefully. And uh, in doing so, I'll explain a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and go over like items and pets before I go over these skills and stuff. So don't worry about this right now. We'll go ahead and go over to items. Um, so over here you have all the items that you are taking with you and then their point cost. So like that four, the 12, the 14, the 20, those are the point costs. If you look at the item, it'll say like pigtail fiber bag and then it says a five. That's the amount you're bringing. Because mm, you do have a point limit to what you can and can't bring on an expedition. Yep. Basically, like it's basically trying to re make it more realistic. You not you can't go on an expedition and like expect to have absolutely everything with you. You're gonna leave something behind you need. Yep. So uh, I'll just go over what I like to take for volcanoes. Um, I'm only gonna have one guy chopping trees at the beginning, so I only need one copper battle axe. They start you with two and they're 68 points, so I'm going to immediately get rid of one, which is a good source of points. Um, crutches, splints are not that important at the beginning unless you are you get like screwed over and one of your guys gets fucked up. Like me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they are easy to replace, though. I mean, you can take a workshop, like I think a carpenter shop, and turn one log into it, so it's not that big a deal. I'm going to go ahead and only bring one of them. I'm going to keep my three buckets, though. That'll be fine. I'm going to keep my quivers for hunting purposes. Um, quivers are made out of leather, um, If you and hunters need them, really, to hunt. So if you don't, you, you either need to, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a good idea to have quivers for hunting and other purposes, too. But we'll go ahead unless and keep them. Unless you've got a very good wrestler who can strangle the giraffe to death. Yeah, but you can't really make the, the wrestler a hunter, because if you give him the hunting duty, he'll still sit there and bitch for a quiver. So I'm only going to take two ropes. Um, <laughs> I'll take the two ropes in order to chain my dogs at the entrance. I don't need a third one. I can make metal chains later. Um, I'll keep my bags. I don't really need too much cloth, so I'm just going to go down to uh, three, and I'll go ahead and put the thread down to three. This is mainly just in case one of my dwarves gets possessed by a mood and wants the material. So. Yeah, if not, he's probably going insane and do something ridiculously stupid, like jump into a sea of lava or something like that. Yeah. So, a lot of people, too, when they first play this game, they're like, you know, what kind of. Aside from saying what kind of fucking items do I need, they're probably also saying, what kind of animals do I need? I don't know what any of this shit right. does. Why would I ever need a cat? Or, a, a, like, why would I ever need a yak? Or a, a bunny. Like, why would you bring a bunny? Or a turkey? <laughs> uh, or a llama. Like, who the hell needs a llama? Okay. I do. Or a reindeer. Or a pig. Or a duck. Okay. So, it's pretty simple, actually, uh, on what you'll want to decide to bring. And, um... So, like, a lot of these animals are basically just here for you to slaughter for meat and other things like that. Um, so like donkeys and horses and cows and lambs and pigs and goats and and uh, reindeer and llamas. Those are mainly animals you, you use for meat production. The female ones you can also milk and turn into cheese for food as well. Um, but I don't really do it. I mean, you could do it yourself if you want to. Uh, if you do do it, bring a male and female. They do cost a lot of points. Like, as you can see, a llama is 101 points, which is ridiculous. Um, why the hell would you even want a llama underground? Uh, I don't know. You, well, actually, you have to keep them above ground, because in this version, you have to assign pastures. And if you don't, they'll just die, because they're too stupid to go above ground and eat. Um, that explains why my last settlement died out. <laughs> yeah. I had, like, a dead... Bull in the dining room. My yeah. last one. I was like, "Why didn't you go up? This is a small staircase to the pasture upstairs." <laughs> so that's that's like uh, you know more bigger animals. So like water buffalo, they're kind of the same. So what about like ducks and chicks? We got a text. Um, so what about like ducks and chicks and roosters and hens and the stuff? Um, well, they're pretty much, pretty much speak themselves. Correct. Um, they're pretty much there for egg production. 
But it still raises like the question like which one do I bring? Is a chicken gonna produce more eggs than a duck? Or what about a what about a hen? Um the things that I've read actually is I believe the the geese and the ganders are the best ones to actually bring for egg production because they'll produce them or they'll lay the most eggs at a time. So if you want to go like egg production, you can. It's a really viable way to make food. Um, again, I'm not really going to do it. Um, I'll go ahead and pick what I'm going to bring and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, I'm going to bring one male cat and one female cat. Um, the reason I'm doing this is you'll have vermin that run around in your uh, base or your fortress and the cats will kill them for you. Um, this can, you need to keep an eye on the cat population though because they'll do this thing where they make lots of babies everywhere and there's this there's a way you can lose due to cat overpopulation called a cat explosion where you have so many cats running around that your frame rate drops to like nothing so if you bring cats make sure you slaughter a lot of them and I'm gonna sneeze right now no okay it's not especially sure it's going to kill us, isn't it? It's just going to be mass cat explosion. No, I'm going to keep those cats in check, don't worry. Um, the other ones I'm going to bring... Oh, cat, cats too, your your doors will act, will automatically adopt cats as pets, which will make them happy. Um, they'll get vastly unhappy, though, if their cat dies. So you have to watch out for that. I'm also going to bring two, uh, a male and female dog. Uh, they'll breed and make more dogs. The dogs you can train into war dogs. Um... Dogs will also attack enemies. Um, they're not very good against armored targets. They're decent against unarmored targets. Um, but the main thing is, like, every once in a while, a dog going up against, like, like let's say, like, an armored human, every once in a while, a dog will get a lucky shot in and basically disable that human for the fight. And that alone is worth it because your dogs can die all, you, all, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a male, male and female one, you can repopulate your dogs. So who cares really if they die? They're, they're, Let's they're... course they're your first two. Yeah, don't let don't let them die. You need them. Yeah, you don't want to do what I did and lost the male one without even realizing. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do for animals. Um, I'm gonna spend my points now in my skills, and then I'll come back and if I have any extra, I'll bring like more seeds and stuff over here and I'll explain this better. But let's let's spend our skills. So, there's a lot of skills in Dwarf Fortress. Like, here's page one, here's page two, here's page three. Don't even know why you all need a presser. Four. I know, right? Page five. You have skills in swimming. You could just chuck a dwarf in a lake. They learn how to swim, it's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, the other question I'm probably asking too is like, what the fuck should I bring as skills? Because there's so many. How would you know what you need, right? Alright. So, I'm going to just tell you, like, what I bring. And I'll tell you, you know, kind of, like, why and stuff. And I'll go over, like, what some of the skills do. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Like, a miner. What does he do? Uh, he probably mines. Uh, so, this is what I do when I play. Especially since I'm going into an area that's going to be mainly rock. Uh, rock is harder to mine through than sand. Um, I'm going to be bringing two miners. So each skill can go up to 10 at the beginning here. Um, so I'm going to bring two different people, both miners. They're not going to do anything but mine. My second guy is going to be a woodcutter. He will go around and kill all the trees on the map. He'll be, when he's not killing trees, he's going to be hauling stuff around. <laughs> I like how you say it's kill as opposed to chop down. Real American language right there. Well, I... If I didn't say kill, then, then the hippies would come around and comment on my videos and say, you're killing trees and you're trying to hide it. And I'll be like, no, I'm not hiding it. I'm blatantly killing trees. So... You could just say it's very careful deforestation of the surrounding populace. There you go. <laughs> um, so the next guy I'm going to bring... my logic. <laughs> so the next guy I'm going to bring is actually going to be my first hybrid guy. He's going to be a carpenter as well as a mason. The carpenter will take logs and build things out of logs at a carpentry shop, and the mason will take stone and build things out of stone. You can build things like tables, chairs, beds, barrels, bins, uh, a lot of necessities. So it's a pr they're pretty good skills to have. 
Personally, I have never seen the points in the bin because I can never figure out how to put them down. Wait, a what? Bin. Oh, a bin? You don't put bins yeah. down. You make you just build them, and when you when you make things like trade goods or gems, they'll they'll just take a bin and put stuff in the bin, and then put it in a stockpile. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing wrong. I'll show you. Don't don't worry. I'll sh I'll show you. Engravers, uh, we don't really need right now. Building designers don't need. We are going to need a weaponsmith and an armor smith though, because we are uh, sp smitty people. We need that. Um, we're dwarfs. We need to mine and smith. Yes, we need weapons and armor. If we don't have weapons and armor, uh, we're fucked. Um, yeah, unless you want to get into a strangle fight with some unknown horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Bowyers do exactly you know what they sound. Uh, furnace operators are pretty important. We're not gonna need any though right now. Um, so for this, these last two guys, they're gonna be like my farmers. So you want to put skills in growing for them. This one is also going to hybrid as a brewer as well. Um, this guy is just going to be a played out grower. Um, some people bring cooks with them and they use the whole kitchen stuff. Uh, I don't think I'm really going to need it. If I play at all like I played in my last series of Dwarf... Or not my last series, but the last time I played Dwarf Fortress, um, I was... About the failed series. No, well, I was playing one right now. Or, or before this, where like I have no medals, all I have is animantite. But um, I'm up to like <laughs> 75 dwarves, and I think I have 1,300 food and plant, and like 1,100 food and meat. So, yeah, I have too much food. Yeah. In case you guys are like getting lost by what we're saying right now, don't worry. Bozen is going to explain it all to us because he he is the man. Word. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if Word you up in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> So if you start in like more threatening areas, you might want to take like a guy with swordsman or maceman skills, it's like that. They, they do exactly what they sound like. Like a dwarf with maceman skills means he's good at using a mace. That's, I don't know. Upside that's the it. head. Yeah. So I have 46 points left over and I have all my skills spent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and buy some plump helmet spawn. So plump helmets are a very good source of food and they're a very good source of drink and they can be grown underground. I'm gonna, you start with only five seeds which is what the spawn is. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to like 30. This will give my farmers something to do once I get a farm going and that'll help me with my food supplies. Basically the spawn is like the noob starting food. Yes, this is the noob starting food. Yeah, it's what I'm pretty much surviving on because I can't figure out how to do anything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's for dinner, Daddy? More, more of the dwarf head cap. <laughs> more. I'm also uh, going to bring some fish with me in the form of turtles. Um, turtles are actually kind of important a little bit because when the dwarves eat them, they'll actually save their shells. And sometimes... Rarely, but sometimes when a dwarf's going into a uh, mood, they'll want a turtle shell. So, <laughs> why we don't want to know? Uh, yeah, I don't. I have no idea. But <laughs> we don't want to find out what they do with them. <laughs> but this is pretty good. I spent all my points, and I got you know some stuff. Um, pigtail seeds you can use to like make clothes and stuff. So it's not. It's you know it's not actually like a food thing. Um, Cave wheat, I think you could turn into beer. Sweet pot, I think is beer. Rock nuts, you can turn into beer. You can also press it into, um, like, paste and then turn it into soap if you want to. Uh, you have to be careful, though, because the rock nuts is actually the seed, and the doors will eat the rock nuts unless you forbid them. But I'm going to be going for cave spider silk because I like to breach into caves, so I'm not going to worry too much about clothes. Basically, most of the plants can be turned into some sort of alcoholic drink. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. I, I like the sound of that. When can <laughs> I move in? Uh, uh, soon. We have to name the fort. So, but this is what I'm gonna be bringing. If you guys wanna, if you guys ever get confused, these are pretty. This is a decent build to kind of bring, um, with you. <laughs> and that naming um, is what you really brought me along for, isn't it? Oh yes. I'm gonna go by random. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can get like ridiculous names, can't you? First, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Tone Halls, Coal Braid, Scratch Gold, Dark Hut, Merchant Rooters, <laughs> Rock Die, <laughs> uh, uh, 
Uh, I want a really good one. Let's see. Taxed tower? No. Scale boots. Pack works. Come on. Taxed tower's master hosen sounded quite good. I need an epic name for my epic playthrough of Dwarf Fortress. Why don't you just why don't you name one of Epic Fortress then, if you can? Uh, I don't know, because it'd be better if it's random, you know, that'd be cool. Blizzard posts. No, they never do. They never come back to you. Um, let's see. Bannerheim? I don't know. Lead pillar. Getting better. Defense gems. All right, we'll be the defense gems. That sounds good. Because <laughs> we need to defend. Let's put a... Let's put a... Let's see. That's the front compound drum, mate. Yeah, let's be the ancient... Oh, ancient gems. Oh, well. yeah. let's see the. Oh, wait, no. I don't want this name anymore. <laughs> uh, armored beard. Yeah, there we go. That's awesome. <laughs> armored beard. Uh, let's the be an um, the ancient. The of. I'm a bit the ancient. <laughs> uh. Isn't like this is pretty much like an entire vocabulary you can choose through, isn't it? Near enough. Yeah, there's like so much stuff here. Um, you can pick ridiculous. up the most ridiculous name. Like, I think I had one called Ape's Beard. Ape's Beard? Ape's Beard, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Armored Beard the Anus Ancient? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, keep it. Keep it. Uh, let's be of the... Of the immortality? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Armored beard, the anus, the anus ancient of immortality. That's our okay. That's our name. That's totally our name. <laughs> I gotta mute myself. Keep on turning All right, cool. That's like the best fortress name ever. All right. So when you're done doing all that don't shit, wanna... you just hit E and you'll embark. And here we go. <sighs> okay, I'm I'm just saying now. You have arrived after. Do you want to read this? I'm terrible at reading. I'll let you read it. Uh, hang on, let me fix the screen because I can't read it all. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond your harsh trek, you finally ended your party... Uh, I've lost track now. Your party of seven is <laughs> making an outpost for the glory of all of Gitaban. Is that really the name of our capital? Uh, I... Sure. I don't know. That's a really bad name. There yeah. are almost no supplies left. But where stout labor comes, sustenance, whether by bolt plow or hook, provide for your dwarfs. You are expected to supply caravans for where the winter entombs you. But it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings. Here, the alligators get hungry. A new chapter of the dwarven history begins here in this place. Now I'm about to say that our, dwarf, our name is Dwarfen. Desidurad Agakzutash Azov. Damn. Well, known as Armorbeard, the ancient, the ancient, ancient of immortality. Strike the earth. All right. And that's my bad voice action done for today. Woohoo! All right, so. I was happy about it. I guess I could like go over windows and stuff. So the window on the right is the world map. Oh, a section of the cave collapsed. Uh oh. What is that? Oh crap. One time, I, I don't know, like, I've seen some random shit with Volcano. Like, one time I played this, and this entire magma pipe just drained out right at the very beginning. I, I don't know. <laughs> down the mountain. No, like, uh, just back down the pipe is where it drained. It was weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting for you. I'm scared. What happens if I unpause this? Oh, God! <laughs> Where's that collapse at? <laughs> oh, okay. That's nothing. No, we're good. We're good. Oh, you know what it is? Is this wall? Oh, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's MC in there. I was going to say, like, you know what it is? It's having a wall. Anyways, the screen all the way on the right is our world map. We're not going to be looking at it a whole lot. I like to have bigger screens, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I'll go ahead and leave that on the right, so if you guys want to look at the different uh, commands and stuff as I go over things, that's fine. You're probably still looking at this going, like, what the fuck is this, unless you played this game. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try... Looking at it. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not like overflow your brain too much and just like yeah. kind of go I'll, I'll, one at a time I will try to, I will try to limit those as much as I can no promises though 
actually, I need to find water right now. So let's see. Water, water. What's that? On a volcano? That's yeah. very unlikely. If not, I'm gonna actually have to try to find an aquifer in order to uh, to get water. Oh okay, we've got plenty of beer. We don't need water. For farms. Well, not if you're doing the noob way, which is what I usually have to do. What is that? Uh, rock. I think it's dwarf caps. They can you can actually grow those without the need for water. What's it called? I think it's dwarf cap or whatever the hell it was. The noob food. Uh, oh, club helmets. Yeah, that's one. Dwarf I dwarf call it dwarf caps because it's easier. Oh, I thought you needed water for blump for plump helmets. Nope. Oh, okay. Cool. Then never mind. Fuck water. We're good. <laughs> uh. The most important thing that I have just made it. Oh wait, here's some. Yeah. There you go. I can make my farm over there. That'll work out. Yeah. All right. So I kind of like this area right here. That's kind of cool. So I think I'll dig in here, maybe, or maybe I'll go down one. Let's see. I'll dig in around here. Eventually, we'll dig in really, really deep and like make a make a bunch of shit around, like down in this layer, and make a bunch of stuff around this volcano. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not dangerous at all. No, of course not. Why would it be dangerous to build your residential areas yeah. around a volcano? Yeah, a potentially active volcano. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. No, it's not active. It'd be fine. It's copper in the wall. <laughs> you hope. I I I know this. Okay, I'm the volcano whisperer. I know what volcanoes <laughs> want. That is your new nickname, the volcano whisperer. No matter Ew. what your job is, you're the volcano whisperer. We have hematite here. That's good. Okay, so let's find a spot. Um, I kind of like this. I think I'm gonna build around it and then maybe build like tunnels coming over here. That'd be pretty cool. So let's find a good spot to dig in. I can like defend yeah. pretty easily. Let's go. In case people are wondering, I'm not actually looking over his shoulder. I am watching him on, from pretty much almost the other side of the world, isn't it? No, you. what are you talking about? You flew all the way over from England in order to do this. This is how much you care about the fans of YouTube. I, I didn't fly. No, 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 no. Oh, you bust. We're British. We're, we're not British. We don't fly. Oh. We're far too posh for that. I took my, I took my luxury yacht. Oh. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just a poor American. <laughs> don't make me take my white glove around your face. I don't have this thing called a, I don't have the euro here. I have the dollar. And it's tanking. Let's see. Hey, he's not, at least he's not as bad as Greece. Yeah. Alright. So, let's see. Oops. I don't <laughs> uh, this is why I thought, thought the euro was a bad idea to begin with. <laughs> so, I kind of want to dig in here. I mean, I want this moat kind of thing. I don't want to be up too high, so let's let's get on base with the lava or the the magma, and let's come in like uh, I'm thinking maybe right over here, and we'll just dig in and yeah, that'll be cool. So how do you do stuff in Zor Fortress? The basic way to do things, you hit D to designate areas, and then this gives you an option of like the the tasks, I guess, really that you can give your dwarves. Well, the basic tasks. Yeah. So first thing I do is gonna go ahead and dig in here. And I'm going to go ahead and make my entrance right here. Um, if you've ever seen the playthroughs of a, of a YouTuber named Captain Duck, um, I'm going to be doing similar designs to what he oops, is doing for his forts. Um, so our forts may look a little bit similar. He, I think he actually got his idea from someone else as well. Um, so if you if you look at his playthroughs and stuff, we'll, we'll look pretty similar anyways. Um, the site should continue forever on this learning of similar building word uh, I'll do a few different things I, though eventually but my I'm deep I'm real deep <laughs> um so what this what you're seeing right here is this is the area that my two miners are gonna come and dig out these X's represent up and down stairs um, if you what I'm doing is going up and down levels right now so what you're seeing is this is a level on top of this level basically and the X's are lined up on top of each other, which will basically make a staircase. It's pretty... Which you can designate with I on your keyboard. Because everything in this game is pretty much done using the keyboard. You pretty much you put your mouse to one side, you don't need it. 
Yeah, you can also click things actually designate stuff. Like check this out. Meow, meow, meow. You know, I could have saved at least an hour of my time last night <laughs> designating it with a key. I could have used my mouse. Yeah, you could. Like little areas and stuff. Why does no one tell do. me these things? Well, you need to watch my let's my let's learn and play videos. That's why. It's kind of hard seeing this area. I'm, we're doing this in the future from when I have already done it. Well, when when we finish this, you can go back and look at the videos, and then you can be like, oh, okay. <laughs> or laugh. Or go, oh, God, why the hell did I say that? Yeah. Well, uh, my timer went off, so uh, when we come back, we'll dig into the earth and start building out our stuff. So um, I'll, I'll see I'll you guys then.